Hey guys, since Jason didn't want to talk about Cinder Ace, who still remains one of the best junglers. I think just Tarn of Flame is a slightly above Cinder Ace, but Cinder Ace is still absolutely crazy and one of the best carries currently in the game that we have for jungle. So for early game, we just dash over this, low sweep it, and just are starting the Lily Pub. Also for head items, we run Muscle Band, Scope Lens, and Buddy Barrier. If you don't feel too confident, you can also drop the Scope Lens or Focus Band, but you do want to do damage. So we start auto-attacking it, and then we low sweep after a boosted auto-attack, because every single of Cinder Ace's ability re uh, resets your boosted auto-attack. So it's always very important to first use your boosted auto-attack, and then go into a you know, ability. So this is something we will do across the entire video. Again, auto attack, we ember, auto attack again, get our boosted auto attack, low sweep, get another boosted auto attack. Now we look for a gank, I already like looking around with my cam to see if I can gank somewhere. Just make sure that my lane gets this A-pom as well, And but yeah, then we spec off, and I'm just going to give this A-pom back to my lane. Just going to help him a bit, just in case, you know, the enemy jungler or they just, the enemies want to invade. I would have been there, so we didn't lose too much time, this corpfish doesn't really matter anyways. We get 5, make our way to bot lane now, bot lane looks a bit overextended. We don't have that much ganking potential, but we do have a red buff, right? The red buff is the thing that makes us do a lot of damage. We just take this Corpfish with our team very fast before the beast spawn. And now we just look for the enemy jungler here as well. We play our red buff, and you can only see me cycling through my basic attacks. You see how much damage I did there, right? I had a boosted auto attack, I am but boosted auto attack, slow sweep, boosted auto attack, and this is just so, so important to do. Here again, boosted auto attack, boosted auto attack, low sweep, boosted auto attack, and we get another kill. Nice early double kill for me, and I'm very, very happy with this, obviously. <laughs> I'm not gonna go score here, it's just way too ambitious, and doesn't really matter much. I'd rather just go back to my jungle very fast, and start doing my jungle again, so we don't lose much time. Playing the blue buff again. And yeah, Cinder Ace is still currently just absolutely strong. I think it's my highest current win rate in the... I can show it up, actually. It's my highest win rate character in the current season, with over almost 90% in a few games. Obviously, it doesn't have too many games played on it, but still, absolutely insane win rate I currently have on this character, and all in solo queue as well. This is all pure in solo queue. On level 7 we pick up Blaze Kick. I'm just a much more of a Blaze Kick fan than Pyro Ball. Pyro Ball is good and it's very good last hitting and it does a lot of damage as well, but Blaze Kick, the mobility, the CC you get from it as well, is just absolutely crazy. And you do so much more teamfight DPS in late game with it as well. But Pyro Ball does have nice secure. Yeah, I'm just gonna look around the map to see if something is gankable. I pick up a berry, I saw a Dragner here. But yeah, now I spotted the Sidroi out. I think he saw me as well, but I'm not quite sure. I know that he doesn't have much up right now, so I'm just gonna auto take him a bit, look for something. Sadly, my Hooper, we could have easily killed him, but my Hooper decided to score instead. So sadly, he lives, and my Hooper, I think, almost dies. Yeah, my Hooper actually dies. For some reason, he didn't feel like auto taking it. And it's like kind of disaster, actually, because they're also gonna get scores in. My Owl on lane is also gonna die quite easily. I'm just gonna run back bot lane to at least hopefully get a kill. Then me the Sidra is very, very greedy. He goes for another stack on his attack weight, I assume. So we just take a kill. And again, even in these scenarios, you always see me juggling my boosted auto attack as much as I can. Now, <laughs> I want to check my blue buff maybe again to get level 9, but some of my Hoopers taking it. So we just to get some kills here, get a nice double kill for myself. And we take the B and the Odin, and we actually get level 9 quite easily. And now we just start doing it instantly. I know I'm level 9, the Sidra just died, so he can't be level 9. And there's two decisions I can make here. Either I fight my opponents with my Unite move, or I try to last it. In this scenario, I just decided to just go for a kid. So I'm just going in, Unite moving the Sidra to finish him off. The Sharizard also already died. Now we go for the Dragon now, or Dragon Knight. And uh, yeah, again, boosted auto attack, Blaze Cape boosted auto attack. Also, the Blaze Cape boosted auto attack always crits, so it's also quite nice damage you can do with it. Now we just go back to our jungle, and we start going for a red buff. Our Hooper goes very deep here. And yeah, we take our red buff and we just look for farm. It's very important you want to be 14, 15 every single game. Also, level 11 is very important. Here, my Hooper uses his Unite move. And I'm just like, okay, I don't know what's happening here. I'm just gonna port in. Whatever. Let's just see what, happen, what happens over here. We do boosted auto attack, blaze kick, and we just start auto attacking him as well again. Another boosted auto attack, and we get a nice double kill. Actually, pretty good Hooper port, I would say. Not too bad. We still get nice kills out of here. They have no jump heads yet, so they have a hard time reacting to this. So I actually like this play. Now we go back to jungle. If you're not level 14 on Cinder Ace by Zepdos, I think you're doing something totally wrong. That's pretty much how it is. You want to you want to be really be level 14, 15. I'm pretty much 15 every single game when I play this character. But yeah, here we go way too deep a bit. I really want the Desist to dry. Sometimes I just have this. You know guys know how I like killing Desist dries. Way too deep there makes no sense. If you're over leveled like me there, just don't go for these plays. It really doesn't matter. If you're three levels up on someone, getting a kill is barely any experience. So just complete misplay by my side there. You shown this is something also very important is not to tunnel vision. And again, again, I also do mistakes, right? But it's good to point them out for you guys as well when I do something so you guys can understand why this was a mistake. So we respawn. But yeah, if you're high level, it just makes no sense. Like you don't have to go for these plays that make absolutely no sense. Our Trevenant is sadly AFK a bit now, but uh, we sing on obviously keep playing. 
and just farm our experience together. Next Red Nose spawning, we're gonna keep our Unite move for it. Looking for the Charizard, maybe. And Charizard is a big problem for Cinderace as well. Um, if he just decides to go for me, I pretty much can't play the game. So I have to be very careful. I have to hope that my Hooper stays next to me. And yeah, so my Hooper goes very, very way too deep here. I try to peer for him a bit. And I, I want to Buddy Barry him at this point. I want to Buddy Barry him. But Charizard Unite moves me. I still get the Buddy Barrier out. But yeah, this is what I mean. I just literally just die. Charizard Unite moving me. I had full heal up. But obviously, it was my Unite move, so I couldn't quite press it. And the Charizard just melee unite moved me, which is hard to react to. Of course, you can. You can kind of, against Charizard, you can always press full here and just kind of anticipate it. That's how often I do it, and that's how I get away with it. Like, you just try to think when he's going to use it, and then pop, pop, pop your full here and dodge the Charizard unite. Sally couldn't do it there. I probably could have, but yeah. I was kind of focused on trying to save my Hoopa with my unite move, and I didn't, didn't realize that Charizard could even unite me from there. So yeah, now we farm back our unite move. And no, no, we don't farm our back going that move. We farm level 13, get our flame charge plus, which gives you a small slow. Nothing too important. The big, biggest important is just blaze kick plus on 11, which gives you a bonus attack speed after blaze kicking. And it's just so much damage you do with it. It's absolutely insane. And again, for blaze kick, you can decide where you land. This was like the biggest update to the, or the biggest buff to the ability. You can decide where you want to be. Now we look for another team fight. I can unite one more time. I just um, full heal the covet, so I cut my unite doesn't get cancelled. We get one kill, jump over the dragon knight, and we get a second kill. I'm just going to stay at max auto attack range now to try and get kills. I'm just going to start doing Rotom as well to life steal a bit. And somehow my entire team dies. <laughs> my team is just always so deep. I still have a blue buff right here, so I'm just be like, okay, either my blue buff gets it with an auto attack or it doesn't, and it does get it. Uh, look for the Greninja now. I try to kite back to my Rotom because Rotom actually does a lot of damage. And thanks to me kiting back to the Rotom, we at least get one more kill. Probably would have died, doesn't matter what. We end up still getting a double kill thanks, thanks to the help of Rotom as well. Alright, Zepta spawning and 110, and now our goal is just nothing is really up on the map, so we see on bot side, if you see all the Odinos are up, my buffs are up, so what we will do is just farm again. We see Dragon Knight scoring on bot side as well, so I'm going to jump towards him and uh, see if I, if he overextends somewhere, goes for my buffs, and he kind of does. So we flame charge, boosted auto attack, blaze kick, boosted auto attack, and just keep, keep auto attacking him. Now we try to chase him as well. So he just has so much mobility, it's so impossible to get away from this character sometimes. Flame Charge and Blaze Kick just goes across the entire map. And it's absolutely ridiculous. There's also a nice trick you can do if you Flame Charge while being on top of someone with Blaze Kick. You can move very far. I made a video about it already some time ago, explaining this mechanic. But if you want to escape or chase someone, um, you can you can gain a lot of distance. Because you can kind of negate the Blaze Kick Flame Charge or the Blaze Kick animation. And you still get the discount from the Blaze Kick, but you're just very, very fast. Uh, and this is something that's very useful for... Getting away from something. Alright, now we're level 15. As I said, pretty much always getting level 15 on this character. Very, very important. We don't go for this last threat. It's just a bit too risky. I don't want to be caught up in a fight on there. Um, so I'm just going to just ping my team to be mid-side. Now I need, really need Pier. If the we have a green and Charizard, we can just pretty much run me down. So I need to be very careful. I'm not going to do much until I see more characters, more any, any Pokemon. I'm just going to stay as far as, away, as far as I can away from them. I'm just going to auto attack him. I'm just going to kill this Corpfish just in case my auto attack score on him doing a team fight. I don't want that to happen. And now already the green is deciding to run me down. The Charizard is also there. So luckily, I flame charge away. Otherwise, I probably would have died already to the Unite move of him. Don't hit full here. And yeah, my team already kind of dying. And this is kind of disaster. Like green just running for me, Unite move me. And you see the Charizard, right? He's trying so hard to get to me. He really, really just wants to Unite move me. And at the end, he just, okay, now my, my Unite move gets cancelled again by the Corvette. And there you see, he just runs, he just runs for me. So these are team fights are very difficult to play sometimes, especially in the aims of these characters. And my Hoopers are really, really doing a good job of helping it. And then we get Zapdos. But again, guys, the game is not over yet. Panic. Now we look at our Cinder Ace damage. We just one-shot the Charizard. I saw two more people on top side moving towards the goal. I'm just only take out attacking this Dragon Knight. I have a boost out attack ready. I boost out attack, blaze skip, boosted out attack, and kill the Greninja as well. Now there's a decision in the meme map that I see. I'm going to kill him as well. And we actually get a quadra kill in defending. So very important. Just try to, when you, when you lose Zapdos, just try to look for characters that you can kill. Now my team has to stand, just defend the uh, Greedent on bot lane. And now we get 100 in. And that should probably game since we had a decent amount of lead. So I'm just going to score my 100 points here. Shari that is respawning now. He doesn't have enough time. And we get it off. Right before he jumps. <laughs> very luckily. And uh, now I'm just going to also fight him. I probably should try to recall here. Um, but I'm confident I can win this fight. Again, we play around our boosted auto attacks very well. You see me not using Blaze Kick until my boost auto attack is up as well. Of course, you don't always have to do it. Of course, Blaze Kick will just be low of damage, but yeah. And they're all dead. 
and we ended up winning this game by 40, barely 40 points. Hope you guys enjoyed this video. Hope it was helpful. And uh, let's look at my damage. I mean, damage wasn't too much, but yeah. Hope you guys enjoyed this video. See you in the next one. Bye.